on the street and you just want to tell them even about your culture and about your way of life, about your ideas, the people are just, um, uh, yeah, are uh, uh, interested in that, yeah? And uh, nowadays, even when I'm even telling even my friends even about some things, they uh, directly, um, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so as a mirror to himself, you know? They, they as a compare, yeah? oh. and um, and to the nice thing is this is as a big as a difference uh, as a between Prabhupada's time and now, yeah? so and so I have the feeling that so they as a compare that, yeah? uh, so the compare the way of life, and then um, yeah, and then yeah, yeah, then uh, they understand, okay, it's so far from the enemy, and I don't want you to do it. So they take it as a personal. They cannot as an accept the yeah, okay, it could be as an another way of life. Oh, so is this a question or a comment? Uh, it's actually as a comment. I would like I wanted to share it as with you. And the comment is that when you are sometimes encountering persons who want to learn more about the philosophy or our way of life, they don't they are they don't feel able to adapt it because it seems so different. Yes. yes. Yeah, our philosophy is very different. Sometimes I, um, I feel like I never thought that this would be religion, you know, because religion is kind of, in, you know, outside of Krishna consciousness, it's a little bit different, at least in the Western religions, in Islam as well, there's a lot of, like, awe and reverence and fear, and there's no personality. And um, outside of that, also, that um, we really take religious philosophy very seriously. It's not just a one time a week for a few hours sort of event. And then we go out eat pizza, you know. It's very scientific. It's very deep, deep understanding. And perhaps, you know, even though people may not, because it's so overwhelming, it can be very overwhelming, right, for people to think that they could see themselves as practicing spiritual life, you know, authentic spiritual life, Krishna consciousness. But, I mean... I think everybody can take the next step in spiritual life. You know, they may not be able to step up to the level of practicing Krishna consciousness, but they can maybe stop eating animals, right? Or they can stop using intoxication, like that. So maybe when you're talking to them, you could be a little also sensitive to where they're at, you know, what their advancement is, how, how they, you know, tell them, don't compromise the philosophy, but um, give them something that they can think about and maybe, I mean, not that you should do this, but you might consider it, right? If you want somebody to become attracted to some aspect of it, maybe they can't accept the whole thing, they accept that, but then say, well, maybe, you know, you, should, you know, just consider, for example, like that we don't use intoxication because it, it's, not, it's really kind of focused on the body and we are not the body, right? This is just something very basic, beginning. I met somebody one time who was an atheist, I sold him a cookbook, Higher Taste. And I, I think like two weeks later, he wanted a quest for enlightenment. You know, so he wasn't ready to take a quest for enlightenment when I first met him. He was an atheist. So he, I gave him a vegetarian cookbook. He was not a vegetarian. But then he read it, and then he started thinking about it, and he was able to next time get another book about God. So, you know, it's maybe they don't accept. Anyway, yeah, it's a gradual process. All right. Modern scientists are puzzled. They cannot even explain how such a large quantity of chemicals has formed the atmosphere. This is very interesting. And it... Yes, it's very interesting because... Um, they, I think, from what I understand, the scientific community acknowledges that they can't prove that life comes from matter, or there was a big bang, or that we evolved from monkeys. They cannot actually prove these things. But they have somehow manipulated evidence, or they have some evidence that could be presented in a manner that suggests as much. But they aren't actually able to prove it.
right? So where do all these chemicals come from? Anyway. All right. Everyone knows that lotus flowers grow in the water, but water never grows from a lotus. All such contradictions, however, are wonderfully possible in Krishna. The great river Ganga has grown from his lotus feet. The real glory of Mother Ganga is that she has grown from the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. Such a hypothesis is another ornament called Anumana. I have simply discussed the five gross faults and five literary embellishments of this verse. But if we consider it in fine detail, we will find unlimited faults. You have achieved poetic imagination and ingenuity by the grace of your worshipable demigod, but poetry not well reviewed is certainly subject to criticism. Poetic skill used with due consideration is very pure, and with metaphors and analogies it is dazzling. After hearing the explanation of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the champion's poet, struck with wonder, his cleverness stunned, could not say anything. He wanted to say something, but no reply could come from his mouth. He then began to consider this puzzle within his mind. This mere boy has blocked my intelligence. I can therefore understand that Mother Saraswati must, or has become angry with me. Purport. In Bhagavad Gita, it is clearly said that all intelligence comes from the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated in everyone's heart as Paramatma. The Paramatma gave the Pandit the intelligence to understand that because he was proud of his learning and wanted to defeat even the Supreme Lord by the will of the Lord, and through the agency of Mother Saraswati, he had been defeated. One should not, therefore, be too proud of one's position. Even if one is a greatly learned scholar, if he commits an offense to the lotus feet of the Lord, he will not be able to speak properly. In spite of his learning, in every respect, we are controlled. Or in, in spite of his learning, he won't be able to speak properly. In every respect, we are controlled. Our only duty, therefore, is to surrender always to the lotus feet of the Lord and not be falsely proud. Mother Saraswati created this situation to favor the champion pundit so that he might surrender unto Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is very important. It's very easy to get puffed up with our material skills, right? But the body we have has been arranged by higher authority. It's like a gift. It's not something... It's a gift that reflects our previous activities, but it's still a gift. And it's not our, you know, the skills that we have, whatever profession or things we've learned to do, is actually, um, we've gotten that skill by being empowered by God, Krishna, by Krishna's mercy, Krishna's allowance, allowedness. He's allowed it to happen. And then if we um, become puffed up, therefore, it's sort of like being ungrateful not showing gratitude to the um, cause of our opulence, not, being, not showing gratitude to the cause of our opulence. And that really comes from, um, that's really kind of, I mean, of course that's present, but it's, it's because of a few things. One thing also, if you look deep inside, it reflects a lack of faith. A lack of faith. Because it means that we think we are strong enough to do something on our own. And we don't have the faith to understand that um, whatever opulences we have, they can be taken away from us just as quickly as they are given to us. And therefore, it's very important also to cultivate faith in the association of other devotees. But by also just kind of remembering. It's, this is another reason why it's important to read regularly the philosophy, to remind us of the supremacy of the personality of Godhead. And the way that the personality of Godhead, the energies of God, are all pervasive. That means they are everywhere. It's so easy to become puffed up because we are so small and the body is so big compared to the soul. It's very large, so many times larger. 
All we do is desire. And it said here also, um, our only duty, therefore, is to surrender always to the lotus seat of the Lord and not be falsely proud. To surrender always means at every moment, right? Always is like without stopping. It means at every moment there is the opportunity to again become the controller and the enjoyer or the... Um, yeah, the controller and the enjoyer. And, to, and therefore, we, we take our own plan. We think of our own plan. We engage our own means for protecting ourselves. And we give up the um, mood of humility in depending on the um, protection of Krishna. So at every moment we have an opportunity to choose, we can choose to serve the spiritual energy or the material energy. The spiritual energy means that we are following in line with Guru, um, Saru, and Shastra. Right? And it means Krishna, following in line. And following the material potency means that we are acting as a controller and the enjoyer. Okay. Oh, this is another thing. This was really good here. He made an offense, and therefore he forgot. He was because of his aparad. So, actually, um, that's kind of important to keep in mind because um, offenses that we make, even though they may appear very small, they actually can make a disturbance in our path of devotional service. They can make it more difficult to remember Krishna. They can make it more difficult to chant nice rounds more difficult to pay attention when we're reading because these abilities of chanting nicely, of reading nicely, of remembering nicely, all of these things are not done by our own strength. We can only desire it. We can only desire to have more attention in our, in our sadhana. That's the only thing we can do is desire it. But the ability to do it, that comes from, uh, that's an allowedness. That's an allowance. We're allowed to do that. It's a permission. It's a privilege, actually. To really get that is to, um, you have to get it from Krishna. Krishna's Balaram, the spiritual strength, right? Lord Nityananda. Paramatma in the heart is an expansion of Lord Nityananda, right? Because Lord Nityananda is actually, I'm pretty sure, is the source of all expansions, right? If you think about this, there's a Chatur Vyuha. Lord Balaram expands into Chatur Vyuha, right? Krishna, how's that, Jayasachi? Right. And so this Paramatma, that is Lord Balaram, that is this mercy, our, the, the um, Shakti of the spiritual master, right? Lord Balaram is representing the spiritual master. Lord Nityananda is representing the spiritual master. And so in order to have that ability to have nice sadhana, to be re- able to remember and chant nicely and all these things, we have to have that mercy of the Guru. And it's not something we do on our own. And as soon as we make an offense, we can lose it, just like he lost it. He lost his ability to remember. He was stunned because he made an offense. He wanted to become better than the personality of Godhead. And any time we, we become independent, that's like we want to become better. We want to compete. We forgot our position as subservient. We are the small jiva. And that's why we practice all the time, by respecting you know, each other, by respecting older devotees. That's why we practice this mood of humility and submissive you know, attitude so that we can practice it and learn it with Krishna. Because if we are thinking ourselves better than the devotees, we are thinking ourselves better than Krishna. Because Krishna is representing himself as the devotees who are all around us. So the upper rod, you want to kind of minimize that, right? That's the point there. It makes your spiritual life easier. The wonderful explanation the boy has given could not have been possible for a human being. Therefore, Mother Sarasvati must have spoken personally through his mouth. Thinking thus, the pundit said, My dear Nimai pundit, please hear me. 
Hearing your explanation, I am simply struck with wonder. I am surprised. You are not a literary student and do not have long experience in studying the Shastras. How have you been able to explain all these critical points? Hearing this and understanding the pundit's heart, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu replied in a humorous way, My dear sir, I do not know what is good composition and what is bad, but whatever I have spoken must be understood to have been spoken by Mother Sarasvati. Hmm. When he heard this judgment from Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the pundit sorrowfully wondered why Mother Saraswati wanted to defeat him through a small boy. I shall offer prayers and meditation to the goddess of learning, the champion concluded, and ask her why she has insulted me so greatly through this boy. Okay, it's, it's almost time to break. Maybe that's a good place to leave. Anything, someone would like, would like to say something? Ask a question or? Okay, so then we will leave. Shri Chaitanya Chaitanya Taki Jai. Oh, that.
nandana braja jana ranjana Today we are reading from the Transcendental Diary, Travels with His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Prabhupada, October 1976 to November 1976 by Hari Sari Das. Srivandavandam Out in the garden at midday, taking his massage, Prabhupada heard the mail from Jagadish. Chaitanya Guru had written from Chandigarh. His letter was upbeat, describing how wherever he goes, people praise Srila Prabhupada and want to know when he will return for more programs. At the time of writing, he was about to meet with the chief commissioner, who is very favorable to get one acre of land for our future temple. Mr. Raj Kumar Gupta, who had met Srila Prabhupada during his visit, has confirmed that he will give um, 100,000 rupees for the land, plus a donation for the deities. Chaita Guru expressed his hope that Iskhan would become more and more popular in the coming months and begged Srila Prabhupada's blessings for his preaching in Punjab. He is alone there at the moment. Prabhupada was well pleased to hear from Chaita Guru, Chaita, Chaita, Chaita Guru, whom he considers to be a capable, capable and energetic preacher who can do much if guided correctly. Impressed with the recent Pandala programs, Prabhupada encouraged his disciple to stick with his work. Yes, Krishna will bless you with good success. Do it rigidly. Krishna will give you strength undoubtedly. I started this movement alone in a foreign country and Krishna gave me all success. Krishna will certainly help you if you simply remain sincere and try to present Krishna consciousness as it is. I know the atmosphere in Chandigarh is very receptive. The only disturbance Chaitya Guru reported was that Yashoda Nandana Swami had borrowed a typewriter from a life member during the visit but had failed to return it. A record player and 16 millimeter film was also taken, and he said that Hangsadura's men had taken the pillow from Srila Prabhupada's Vyasasan. Vyas, Vyasasana. He requested that at least the typewriter be returned and suggested that since the life member knew Yashoda Nandana's legal name and passport number, he could bring a case against him and thus put an end to the preaching. Prabhupada didn't respond to this in his letter, but he did tell Jagadish to try and settle the matter. So this is a nice place to stop, actually. I could read more. Show of hands. More reading? Raise your hand. Indifference? Okay, we'll read a little bit more. You don't, you're okay with it? Okay, cool. From New York, there was a letter from Tripurari Swami with an enclosed copy of National Geographic. 
He had no particular purpose, but was inspired to write after reading the magazine, which was full of reports on the latest theories on the origins of life. It is very interesting, he said, how everything is worded just to lead one to believe that it is fact that life comes from matter. Such rascaldom, such word jugglery. Your books are the real science. By this Bhagavad science we can conquer death. He said that he is touring the United States preaching your glories and the glories of Lord Chaitanya and enthusing devotees in book distribution. They are just like men from Vaikuntha, undaunted by all this nonsense propaganda. I am encouraging them all to remain pure by chanting and reading, deity worship, etc., that they might go on preaching life after life. Finally, he requested Śrīla Prabhupāda's blessings to go on with his work. Prabhupāda was happy to hear of Tripurari's enthusiasm for preaching and urged him to continue. Please go on with your program, preaching and distributing my books, encouraging others to remain pure by following our simple program of chanting, reading, deity worship, etc. Krishna will certainly help you. Keep yourself always engaged in the service of Gora Nitai, and they will keep you liberated from material contamination. When signing the typed letter later, later in the day, Prabhupada also wrote a postscript about the magazine. It is over-materialistic. Prabhupada also received a welcome letter from Harikesh Swami, who is now in Germany. He and Jayatirtha have agreed that he will take charge there so that Jayatirtha can concentrate on England and South Africa. Harikesh opened his report by informing Prabhupada that he has repaid half the personal loan he received when he left Vrindavan with 12% interest and has placed the money in one of Prabhupada's accounts in Los Angeles. He then went on to describe the bold preaching of Dwarka, of Dvarakesha and Prabhu Jaka Prabhus in Yugoslavia. They have been touring the country, visit, visiting all the major cities. When they arrive, they simply sit down in the main squares, hold kirtans with Murdanga and Tambora, and chant Hare Krishna. Because their instruments are classical Indian, they are readily accepted, and the chanting is part of the show. They attract hundreds of people, many of whom buy books and want information about Krishna consciousness. Local newspapers invariably write favorable articles about them, and in Hmm. And in Ljubljana, they spoke and chanted for half an hour on the main radio station. The last day's program held in Zagreb was widely advertised. Dvarakesh and Prabhujaka were broadcasted over the radio and also appeared on TV. They posted huge posters all over the town advertising Indian music and philosophy. Dvarakesh, Das, and Prabhujaka Das monks. At the program, they chanted and lectured and were even paid a very large amount of money. About 1,000 people attended, mostly university students, and they bought all the books, beads, and other items. The people were so eager that they even wanted to buy Dwaraka, Dwarakesa and Prabhujaka's personal books and beads, which the devotees managed to keep only after much struggle. <laughs> All told, they sold about 2,500 Deutsche Mark worth of worth. Dwarakesh and Prabhu Jaka have also had some success holding programs in yoga schools where members seem to prefer, seem to prefer their lively kirtans to the dry fare they get from the impersonal yogis who run the schools. This is not to say that they had no problems, however. Yugoslavia is a nominally communist-ruled country under the autocrat Tito, and the devotees have reported frequent contact with secret police who they believed followed them around the country. According to Harikesh Maharaj, it was only because of the important contacts they made that they weren't thrown out. They have many letters of commendation and many invitations for them to come and do programs at student clubs. 
Without these letters, the police would have kicked them out of the country long ago. It was only because of the invitations that they were allowed to stay. And this was all gotten on the basis of music, because religion, or even yoga, etc., is not very attractive. And in fact, the police tried to smash it. But although they bill it as music, they play only our standard kirtan chants and do not try to imitate popular music. It is just the drone of the tam tampura and murdanga, and they get everyone to chant Hare Krishna, lecture, and then sell tons of books. They feel that it is basically essential, but they are willing to take a risk, as your last letter to them said that they should only use murdanga. I feel that they do not play well enough to do much, and without the covering story that they are performing musicians, they would definitely be asked to immediately leave. We are all concerned to hear your reply. Okay, so you see what's happening here? Prabhupada said, only play Murdanga, and they're playing Murdanga and Tampura. So they want to know if it's okay. Hari Kesh also had some news about Gurudas Swami's preaching in Poland. I am arranging for two German boys to stay in Poland for a while, because as it stands now, Gurudas will, sim will go to India. He can always join them later on. I have written to him with full advices and encouragement to stay, but it seems a failure. Hari Kesh ended with a nice prayer. I hope you are feeling well and willing to benedict me with a drop of your mercy by which I may be able to live and become a purified servant. Prabhupada was extremely happy to hear the report. Hari Kesh is providing his worth, proving his worth and fulfilling the expectations that Srila Prabhupada placed on him when he sent him back to Europe last month. First, thanking him for repaying the loan, he dictated an enthusiastic response. I am very pleased to learn of our success in Yugoslavia. When there is a little hope of success in these countries, it encourages me 100 times more than in other places. If they take up this Krishna consciousness, they'll take it very seriously. This is the perfection of communist ideology. Everything belongs to God. No private proprietorship. They have gone on the radio. That means they have purified the whole atmosphere. That is a way to introduce the transcendental sound vibration. That is a way to introduce. The transcendental sound vibration will act. Utilize this approach. Gradually try to convince them that this movement is a perfection of communism. Go on singing Krishna Kirtan. That is our program. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu used to go out chanting. He never spoke philosophy in public, only among higher circles. The chanting is very effective, along with Tampura and Murdanga played very rhythmically. Let them chant. Perform this musical demonstration and sell books as far as possible, and feasting. Then everything will be successful. It is good that they do not like these bogus yogis, and they like Hare Krishna Mantra. Give them the chance to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra somehow or other. Then very soon, good results will be there, will be visible. As far as Guru Das Swami goes, Prabhupada wants him to preach in Eastern Europe. And he reiterated that, what he just wrote to Guru Das himself a few days ago, adding another reason why he should not come to India just yet. I'm not very much in favor of Guru Das coming here. Let him know that his former wife Yamuna is here. Therefore, he should not come. Why is he so adamant to come here? He can move. He can come later during the Mayapur festival. Why doesn't he join with you until Mayapur, at least? Okay, that's a natural stop. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think anything anyone would like to say something, comment, or about this reading that we had. Yes, sir. So, uh, so was the Prabhupada uh, was um, thinking that the Nikirtan with the modern the music of the instrument is not not so nice, right? Uh, without the modern instruments, he didn't like it with the modern instruments, right? He didn't. He liked simple music, yes, simple no. instruments, the classical, traditional Gaudiya Vaishnava instruments, cartels, madanga. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And here, but I, yeah, right. Something else anybody would like to say? 
I think what's very interesting is that they ask permission from Srila Prabhupada. You know, he's a spiritual master. He's the institutional guru. Even we may get individual gurus who are disciples of him, like that. But um, he's the institutional guru. And that's why we read his books. So that we can understand his mood of preaching. We can understand his instructions, what he wanted. They're all in his books. Everything is there. And when they asked him this question, they wanted to make sure everything was okay. They really had this sense of obedience to the spiritual master. You know, really paying, what does Prabhupada want? Is it okay? He said, A, we're doing B, we have to ask and make sure that's okay. You know, they adjusted for time, place, and circumstance, and then they checked to make sure that it was okay. So they did not act independently. Spiritual, spiritual life doesn't mean that you, you have to always follow the instruction to the spiritual master. You have to always follow. We have a parampara, evam parampara praptam. It's written in the Bhagavad Gita. This whole system of hierarchy is actually in scripture. It's not an invention. It's in the scripture. Anything else? Okay, cool. Jai, Srila Prabhupada's Transcendental Pastimes Ki Jai. Oh, I just lost our place. <laughs> My goodness. I'm sorry. Let's see, what do we have here? Uh, just one second, please. I think I can find this pretty easily because it's sort of... Right... Ah, no? Ah, there it is. Good. No, no, that's not... Okay, no, I'm just going to read. I'll find it later. All right. Reading from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Okay. Today we read from chapter Adi Lila, chapter 16, verse 71 in German. That's cool, everybody? Okay. How is it? Somebody, you know this? It's just regular meter, huh? Like Bhagavad Gita. Okay. Rasalang Kavyang. Dosha Yugched. Vibhushitam Syadvapu Sundaram Api Syadvapu Sundaram Api 
स्वीचे स्वीत्रे नायकेन दुर्भगम रसालंकारवत काव्यं दोषयुग चर्विभूषितम सर्वपुसुंदरम अपि स्वीत्रे नायका स्वीत्रे नायकेन दुर्भगम रसालंकारवत्काव्यं Rasalankaravakavyam Dosha Yukche Vibushitam Dosha Yukche Vibushitam Rasalankara Vadkavyam Rusha Yukche Vibushitam Shaiva Pusundaram Api Svitre Naikena Durbagam Could somebody please hand me the English Chaitanya Charitamrita? I find it is cool. Sorry, it was my mistake. No, it's okay. No, no problem. Rasa. Rasa. With humors. With humors. Alankaravat. Alankaravat. With ornaments. With ornaments. Metaphors, similes, etc. Metaphors, similes, etc. Kavyam. Kavyam. Poetry. Poetry. Dosha yuk. Dosha yuk. Faulty. Chet, Chet. If. If. Vibhushitam. If. Vibhushitam. Very nicely decorated. Very nicely decorated. Syat. Syat. It becomes so. It becomes so. Vapuhu. Vapuhu. The body. The body. Sundaram. Sundaram. Beautiful. Beautiful. Api. Api. Even though. Even though. Svitrena. Svitrena. By a white spot. By a white spot. Of leprosy. Ekena, one, one. Durbhagam. Durbhagam, unfortunate. unfortunate. <clears throat> Translation, as one's body, although well decorated with ornaments, is made unfortunate by even one spot of white leprosy, so an entire poem is made useless by a fault, despite alliteration, similes, and metaphors. Verse seventy two Pancha Alankarera Eva Sunaha Vichara Dui Sabda Lankara Tina Atta Dui Sabda Lankara Tina Atta Alankara now here, the description of the five literary embellishments. There are two ornaments of sound and three ornaments of meaning. There is a sound ornament of alliteration in three lines. And in the combination of words Sri and Lakshmi, there is the ornament of a tinge of redundancy. In the arrangement of the first line, the letter ta occurs five times, and the arrangement of the third line repeats the letter ra five times. In the fourth line, 
the letter B occurs four times. This arrangement of alliteration is a pleasing ornamental use of sounds. Although the words Sri and Lakshmi convey the same meaning and are therefore almost redundant, they are nevertheless not redundant. Describing Lakshmi as possessed of Sri, opulence, offers a difference in meaning with a tinge of repetition. This is the second ornamental use of words. The use of Lakshmir Iva, like Lakshmi, manifests the ornament of meaning called Upama, analogy. There is also the further ornament of meaning called Virodha, Abhasa, or a contradictory indication. <clears throat> Everyone knows that lotus flowers grow in the water of the Ganga, but to say that the Ganga takes birth from a lotus flower seems extremely contradic contradictory. The existence of Mother Ganga begins from the lotus feet of the Lord. Although the statement that water comes from a lotus flower is a contradiction, in connection with Lord Vishnu, it is a great wonder. <clears throat> in this birth of the Ganga, by the inconceivable potency of the Lord, there is no contradiction, although it appears contradictory. So they're talking about poetry. Does everybody know what's happening here? This is when they, um, this, um, this, um, when Lord Chaitanya met with this great Kavi, Kazi Mishra? I think his name was, no, not Kazi. Um, anyway, he met with a, a very, very famous poet who was, uh, um, yeah, con you know, Basically, he was going around India and he was um, establishing his dominance in poetry and, and philosophy. He was a devotee of Mother Saraswati. And by chance, he met um, Lord Chaitanya by the Ganga. And they started having a conversation. And then, um, yeah, basically... He started praising the Ganga, Keshava Kashmira, Kashmiri Pandit was his name. And he started, he, he you know, composed a hundred verses in praise of the Ganga. And he, you know, spoke all of them. And Lord Chaitanya, Chaitanya, Chaitanya remembered them and found a fault in one of them. And so they're discussing the fault. Because he said, no, there's no fault in that. And then Lord Chaitanya said, yes, there is actually. <clears throat> in this birth of the Ganga, by the inconceivable potency of the Lord, there is no contradiction, although it appears contradictory. Purport. The central point of all Vaishnava philosophy is to accept the inconceivable potency of Lord Vishnu. What sometimes appears contradictory from a material viewpoint is understandable in connection with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, because he can perform contradictory activities by dint of his inconceivable potencies. Modern scientists are puzzled. They cannot even explain how such a large quantity of chemicals has formed the atmosphere. Scientists explain that water is a combination of hydrogen and oxygen. But when asked where such a large quantity of hydrogen and oxygen came from, and how they combine to manufacture the great oceans and seas, they cannot answer, because they are atheists who will not accept that everything comes from life. Their thesis is that life comes from matter. Where do all these chemicals come from? The answer is that they are produced by the inconceivable energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Living entities are part of the Supreme Godhead, and from their bodies come many chemicals. For example, the lemon tree is a living entity that produces many lemons, and within each lemon is a great deal of citric acid. Therefore, if even an insignificant living entity, who is but a part of the Supreme Lord, can produce so much of a chemical, 
how much potency there must be in the body of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Scientists cannot perfectly explain where the chemicals of the world are manufactured, but one can explain this perfectly by accepting the inconceivable energy of the Supreme Lord. There is no reason for denying this argument. Since there are potencies in the living entities who are samples of the personality of Godhead, how much potency there must be in the Supreme Godhead himself. As described in the Vedas, Nicho Nichanang Chaitanas Chaitananam. He is the chief eternal of all eternals and the chief living entity among all living entities. Kata Upanishad 2.2.13 Unfortunately, atheistic science will not accept that matter comes from life. The scientists insist upon their most illogical and foolish theory that life comes from matter, although this is quite impossible. They cannot prove in their laboratories that matter can produce life, yet there are thousands and thousands of examples illustrating that matter comes from life. For therefore, in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that as soon as one accepts the inconceivable potency of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, no great philosopher or scientist can put forward any thesis to contradict the Lord's power. This is expressed in the following Sanskrit verse. So I just say a little bit about this really quick. So why don't atheists accept the, the personality of Godhead? Does anybody know? Why are, why are atheists atheistic? Why don't they believe in God? Nobody knows? Okay. That's probably something to do with it, I'm sure. They're envious. They don't want to think that there's another person out there that they're, is better than them, right? Competition. Yeah? Um, maybe because there is no evidence for them and they need material evidence to prove something which is beyond material, which is impossible. Probably something like that also, right? So, I mean, I don't know why every atheist is an atheist, right? But I hear a lot that, would you like to say something? Yeah. Uh, very disappointing religions, for example. Oh, that's a very good reason. The one of the and the Renaissance, that's a very good reason. Yeah, that's actually very. Many centuries of disappointment. Ultimately, people have enough for it, and they just say, "Well, forget about it." Thank you. That's actually that's actually um. So far as I've, I, you know, I yeah, I, I um, I think that might be. That's probably like one of the main reasons why the academic class of society are atheistic because a hundred years ago they weren't but they are now so there's a couple of things there right one is that um, they become frustrated with the example of religious practitioners and they become frustrated with the example of religious wars so in, instead of and so they just turn away from the whole thing which is unfortunate because that also means that they don't have access to the um, religious philosophy. There's a lot of religious philosophy that is independent of a person's faith, right? Like um, loving your enemy, right? That's pretty basic. Forgiving others, that's also very helpful to being happy. There's research out, economic research showing that people who are grateful, who practice gratitude, express gratitude and, um, yeah, gratitude and forgiveness, they are... Um, more likely to be employed. They have a higher self-rated um, happiness and they have more friends. And persons that are vindictive and envious, they're less likely to be employed, they're more miserable and they have fewer friends. So there's a lot of, already even, right? There's already evidence that by practicing philosophy of religion, there will be a, an economic result. That's an economic result. Even if you take out unemployment, that's still an economic result. Because part of economics is behavior. But more of economics is why people do the things they do. Of course, how does that relevant for us? Is that, um, like somebody was telling me, always we are preaching Krishna consciousness by our example. So when we walk around, you know, out in the, outside of the temple or even in the temple, by our behavior, people are watching. 
and they're learning what is Hare Krishna by our own example. And that's just another reason why it's very important to um, cultivate, you know, this Vaishnava culture, Varnashrama culture. I was going to ask you a question yesterday about that, but I missed my chance. But we can... <laughs> Varnashrama culture, what does it mean? I mean, I always thought Varnashrama meant four orders and, you know, dividing society into um, or spiritual, you know, st- uh, lifestyle, let see. Yeah, four orders and, um, yeah, what's the other one called? But yeah, the four activities, occupations, and orders of life. And but I, I didn't know that it went beyond that. But I think it does. It must. <laughs> so, like, this is our culture then, right? As you were saying yesterday, you were kind of presenting it like that. Varnashrama culture. <coughs> So we are always acting in that capacity of preaching Krishna consciousness by our activities. And so therefore we have an opportunity all the time, just by our behavior, you know, to, um, to show what is religious philosophy really. And the other thing is that um, because they cannot see God. Yes, sir. You wanted to say something? Because they can't see. Jai, shishi vijay goranga dayoni tai ki jai. They're also not able to see God, but there's actually so much evidence of... Um... Yeah, so I just leave that. So much evidence of God, right? Through In nature, Krishna, inconceivable potencies. I'm going to continue reading now. Yes. And I would like to notice on the one thing, so I'm not so sure if I can... Uh, so I'm explaining it as only correctly, but as an idle child. Uh, so if I only hear some of the stories from uh, devotees from uh, yeah from other masters in the century for 20 for 50 years, they uh, they are telling that nephews and the matters and the sons.